Let's get started. First of all, I'd like to welcome you to our DTLA pop-up webinar. Um, this is our first one, and we're hoping to do these um, not every week, but maybe every couple of weeks, every few weeks. Uh, a couple of announcements before we get started. On April the 30th at 4 p.m., we're having another pop-up, just like this one. It's going to be Kent Hughes, who is the CEO and president of Trialsmith. And he's going to come on to give us the ins and outs of Trialsmith and tell us what we're not using that we should be using that is going that is going to help our practices and our clients. Um, so tune in for that April 30th at 4 p.m. Uh, May the 7th, starting at 5.30 p.m., we've got our DTLA board meeting, uh, and that is via Zoom. We call it Club Zoom. So anybody who wants to attend that, feel free to come on in. Um, finally, May the 19th, DTLA is hosting Jim Purdue Jr. for our monthly CLE. You will get your CLE hour for that one. Uh, this is free statewide. He's going to talk on how to effectively communicate with jurors of different generations. And now I have the feeling he's probably going to stick in some post-COVID-19 or dire ideas as well. So you don't want to miss that one. Um, everybody, please mute yourselves so that when Chris is talking, uh, he can have the speaker floor. That would help tremendously. If you have a question and you want to ask a question, uh, put that in the uh, question and answer. Do we have a question and answer well, we've got or the, the chat? Yeah. Okay. If you'll let me know if you see a question that you want me to answer, just stop me. Okay. Put that in the chat and I'll try to get to those questions so that we can have Chris address those. Um, we are privileged and honored to have Chris Stoy here with us today. He's one of the founding partners of Hutchison and Stoy out of Fort Worth. He's a fantastic trial lawyer. I've known him for a lot of years, graduate of the, tech, of the uh, Trial Lawyers College. He is a lawyer who will outwork and out smart the defense every step of the way. He's a fantastic lawyer. He loves his clients. If you don't follow him on social media, you need to. Go to YouTube, Fort Worth Car Wreck Lawyer or Warriors for Justice. He's got great videos. Follow him on social media. And more than that, he puts his heart and soul into every case. And we're honored to have him here today to talk to us about Zoom and Trawpad. Thanks. <clears throat> Those are some very kind words, Rachel. I appreciate it. Um, so today I'm going to go over quite a bit of stuff, starting with uh, trial pad in general and what, how to begin with it. And if you've got your iPad uh, and you've got trial pad on it, I suggest you bring it up and go to like a case that you have, that you can kind of work on. But for me, the most important thing that when it comes to use of the trial pad is setting it up. So, and by that, I mean setting it up on your computer, not on, uh, not on, not on trial pad itself. I'm going to kind of walk everyone through what I do to set up trial pad. Can Rachel, can y'all see my screen? Yes. All right. So we've got it. I have a client who's been nice enough to let me use his uh, file, including some medical records. They've been redacted for uh, social security and all that. But when I've got a, a case that I'm going to get ready, and by the way, I start preparing my case on trial pad well before trial. So that by the time trials come, my exhibits have been marked, um, they've been introduced, and I'll, I'll have the same exhibits uh, throughout the entire time. And I don't like having in one deposition, it's exhibit one, and then in another deposition, it's exhibit five. I've never really run into any problems with that. So <clears throat> I'm getting ready to go to a deposition or I'm gonna go to trial. I've gotta move all my files over that I'm gonna use. So this is the way we typically uh, keep our files. So this is Roger Wright's file, and I'm going to go to Discovery because I want to use Bates number documents to produce to use as exhibits. That way, there's never any question about it. And I'm going to go to Production, and this is where I'm going to find and use my documents for my exhibits in addition to whatever the defense may produce to me. And then I've created a file called Trial, and then Exhibits. 
And then I create these subfolders. Everyone has their own, um, you know, idea of the subfolders that they want. I think that subfolders are great for organizing, but if you get too many, <laughs> it's like you just keep clicking into the eternal depths of, of subfolders. So use them, but don't use too many. So the first thing that I'm gonna wanna add is my medical. Now I've already added these over, but I'll show you how I do that. What I'm clicking on right now, where it says, so follow with me here, this medical. This is the way it would appear in our discovery. We group them by subfolder. I'm starting to get away from that. And then we identify them by Bates number at the very front. So PLTF0098 through 318. And we say MRF and then the uh, name of the medical entity and then the date of the affidavit. And that's wonderful, especially for producing stuff, but I hate it when it comes to using it at trial or on trial pack, because I don't want to read PLTF0098. So let's assume, and I've already uh, moved these over. What I'm gonna do is go in here and I'm gonna copy them, not move, but copy. Because if you move them, then they are out of your production folder. And so you can't show what your uh, production folder shows. And then I've got them in my trial folder. Now I want to go back through and I want to rename them. But I, I just keep it as simple as possible, like ambulance. And I'll show you why later. I've gone ahead and done all that so that we can see what it looks like. But up, you can see I've got my, uh, maybe less. You can see I've got my clients, medical, in a very simple, easy to read description. Because I'm going to have them grouped in a subfolder on my trial pad, so I know that they're they're uh, exhibit or uh, that they're medical records. Um, you know, UT Southwestern. I need to put neuro because it's a neurologist that he went to, not UT Southwestern. Something that triggers my mind. And then I'm going to do the same thing with billing. So and Chris, real quick, you're doing this in preparation for uploading all this stuff to TrialPad, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's the most important part of TrialPad. I yeah. mean, being able to flow really quickly with all your stuff is, is the most important thing. So I've done that with my injury photos, um, everything that I want to produce. And I'm not going to go through them all, but the one thing I do want to show you is uh, In this case, we have a picture of an intersection that a witness took, and it was a picture of a red light. And when he took it, and when we received it in its still version, the light uh, was not on, but it was, it was blinking because they were working on it. And so when we activated the photo, we saw that it was blinking. The defendant claims he didn't have a red light or he didn't have a light whatsoever, uh, but we were able to, well, hopefully we're able to prove that that's just not right. So when I move, I call these intersection photos. When I move them over, um, I keep them in separate than the video. I've moved them over to my, like, this is my trial folder. I moved them over here. And this is what the photo looks like. All right. Um, and I've moved the video, it's this, over here, over to the, trial folder. So you would see me move it over here. You can see it's telling me we already have it there. So um, no, we don't want to do it. But the important thing is when you have a video in trial pad, defendant, so we know it's defendant their life, you want to create a PDF that is a placeholder for that video. Because when you go to mark exhibits for use at trial, it won't mark a video in trial pad for whatever reason. Or if it does, I've not figured out a way to do it. So the easiest thing that I've found to handle that is to create a PDF and then I'll ex put an exhibit sticker on that. And that way, when I batch that out to the judge or have a working copy for the notebook, 
I'm good to go. I've identified the video as an exhibit. So now it's time to move everything over to, to trial pad. For me, I use it on Finder, I'm a big Mac user. For, I, I don't know, I know some people still have to use iTunes depending on their version, but it's for the most part the same. It just, it's just a different view that you would have. So I'll go to files and I'll scroll down until I see trial pad. All right, we got it. And then I'm going to take my exhibits folder from this. Uh, there we go, one more. I'll take my folders from the exhibit folder and I'll drag and drop them into trial pad. Now, Chris, real quick, this is for the folks who are using Mac Apple products, yeah. right? It's going to be yeah. a little bit different for PC, right? Yeah, and I'm sorry, I just don't know how to um, do the PC version of it. It's, I imagine it's, I, I know you can go to iTunes, like when I had iTunes for Mac, you just, you still drag and drop it over. I would assume that PC has that same option. Right, we're getting a question at this juncture. Can you use a Windows computer to load items to an iPad? I, I think so. I mean, surely so. I know that the Reflector 3 is a good is a good is a good tool to integrate uh, trial pad with um, PCs. Yeah, I mean, I'm surely you can. I saw some heads nodding that yes, you can. I I, I would. That would be crazy if you couldn't. All right, we've so, got we, we've got an answer to that. Jim Gerard says you can upload all your files to Dropbox. Yeah, that's true. There you go. Yeah, you can. And I've downloaded on trial pad. My, the files that I want to use from Dropbox. So that's true. So now we'll go to the iPad. You see my, you got the iPad, Rachel? Yep, sure do. All right, so I'll go to my trial pad app. Give me a second while it loads. All right, so y'all are seeing what I'm seeing. So yes. this is uh, this is what it's called war remote, so you can like demonstrate to people. Um, I think you can. So now that my where my files are located here, so I'll click the top left, then I'll select all my documents, and I'll select a case. I already created this case as subfolder, but if I needed to create it, I could just add new case. Okay, I'll do it just to show, and it's right view range. Then I'll select right, be rainy. We've got all our files moved. So now we're in the um, the uh, trial pad itself, like the, for that for that case. And I'll want to, I guess, number my exhibits. Is that the first thing we want to look at? So I'll go to the folder that I want to start with, and I can. Just select all the exhibits, and if I do that, it will number them in the order that they appear right there. So it would be ambulance would be one, DSW diagnostics would be two, and so on and so on. Or I can select them in the order that I want it to be numbered. So if I did that, and I assigned an exhibit sticker, you'd see that they, it, does it in the order that, that we selected the exhibits. And incidentally, if you wanted to name them one, two, and three, you could do that too, right? Yeah, and that's what I'm gonna show right here. Okay. So,
what I like to do is I'm going to number my medical exhibits. And I don't know if y'all are like me, but I start working on my exhibit folder and my exhibit list. And then maybe something comes up or the case doesn't get reached and we get continued. And now we've got trial at a different date and I decide I want to add another exhibit. And it, maybe it just happens to be a medical record that I was finally able to locate. And I don't want it to be exhibit number 65 because that just doesn't compute in my mind. And I'd rather it be up there where all the other exhibits are. So when I number them all, I'll assign my exhibit sticker. I'll put a header. I'll use a prefix here of MR since it's medical record. And I'll start with one. And I want it in the left hand side because all my stuff's dates numbered on the right. And I'll apply. And now we've got MR1 through MR8. For billing, we'll do the same. We'll assign exhibit sticker. And here, I'm going to change it to BR. And it's going to, we got to start back at one. And we've got it on the left side and we apply and now we've got BR1. Now we still got our medical um, with the prefix of MR but we've got our billing with the prefix of BR. I've never had any objections or a judge tell me like don't do that and I find it just very helpful especially if I'm going to add exhibits later. So yeah the next thing that Rachel wanted me to go over <clears throat> the use of key docs. So for me, this is like one of the most important things. Um, because key docs, you see down here at the bottom left, you've got documents and then you've got key docs. You can see that we don't have any key docs in here. So I'd like to think of those as like two different filing cabinets. So there are certain documents that I, I would assume you want to mark up before you go to trial, or maybe you want to use trial pad to redact your exhibits. I do that a lot too. So I will, my, for example, my medical. So I'll select the, um, the medical that I want to use and I'll, or the exhibit, I'm sorry. And I'll hit up here where it says this little key. I'll click key doc, entire document. And I'll go through and I'll do it for all of them. I'm not gonna do it all, as I'm not gonna do them all for a long, but I'll create the same, I'll, let me slow down. Now that we've gone to key docs, so now we're in the, we're in the different, uh, So we've gone to, we're in key docs and we're in the different filing cabinet. Now I, I want to make sure that I have these grouped as well. So I will create a new folder in here. And really the purpose of using these key docs is you have them at your fingertips. Uh, they're in the order you want them and you, they, they, they keep the highlighting, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, So now I can go in here, make sure that I've selected the exhibit and say I want to uh, redact like just a portion of this. Okay. Now, if I go to another exhibit and then I come back there, that redaction has stayed. Uh, same thing with the highlight. I go to another exhibit and come back, it stayed. But if we're in the documents, so I've now switched over to documents. If we're in the documents filing cabinet and we do a redaction on an exhibit and then go to another exhibit and then come back, the redaction hasn't stayed. So it's just something that you want to be able to, if you want things to stay on your exhibits, make sure you do them in key docs. 
All and that, right. that'll help you in, in cross too, because you can highlight on the fly during cross, put it in key docs. And when you do your, your, your or, or direct, and then you do your, your redirect or recross, it's there. Yeah, absolutely. And I, if, <clears throat> I've not run into any of this really, but um, use it on direct, direct with your client. I like to have the, um, this, this goes into bookmarks, but I like to have my, add my bookmarks on the documents. So, right, the documents uh, filing cabinet before I move them over to key docs so that I have a copy that doesn't have highlights and I have a copy that does have highlights. So when I'm going through my medical with my client, if the defense objects to leaving, I can go to my documents folder and I still have my bookmarks, which we will get to now. So um, let me add one more thing. So when it comes to outlining, and this will be real quick, um, or bookmarking, what I do is I take my medical records and I send them to this company that then puts them in order. And it's like so cheap, relatively speaking, for the amount of work that, that goes into it. And they add these bookmarks and... Uh, They'll like hyperlink for the, in the medical chronology. So like in the chronology here, right? I can click on this and it'll take me to where that is. And I do it with my base number documents. Like, so my, what I've produced, because it's just, I mean, if you have all, all your stuff base numbered and all, I've even started base numbering before I, or when I send the demand, because that way I've, I'm already working with it. I've got my medical chronology early on. So when the adjuster says blah, 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 you know, I can quickly find it. So and you'll, you'll give us that resource that you use. So I'll give it out, uh, out to the, I will. yeah. Okay. I don't have, uh, it's like medical record. I'll have to look it up, but um, so now we'll get that for you, yeah, everybody. Promise. Um, so now I've got my medical chronology here and I'm preparing for a deposition or just depot prep with my client. I actually did this case earlier with my client. He's got his depot marked. And I see that um, um, maybe it's something, well, I know what it was. So I remember on four, two or four, four, when he goes to the neurologist, the, the neurologist talks about um, about him experiencing some uh, issues with loss of hair, um, and he reported something about his golf game. Regardless. Look now at the trial pad displayed on there, and I'm in the neurology docs, and I know that um, on 275, plan of 275, that whatever it is, that Well, that is not matching up, but take the hospital, for example. I can be in the hospital docs and I can find whatever it is, or say you've got a lot of chiro appointments or you've got like a, a provider that's at comp spine or, I mean, I'm sorry, a client that's at comp spine or whatever um, pain management doctor, you know, and they've got 12 different visits and it's important for you to track those, visit, those visits. You will be able to look at your medical chronology on PDF, Adobe, and then you follow over here on your bookmarks and you just add the bookmark, you know, um, two, 12, 17, uh, initial visit. And you keep adding through it. Whoop. You keep adding them. And as you scroll down, you've got another visit. All right, now we're, we're at 4 12 visit. And 
it, it'll just add and that makes it so easy when you're walking with your walking your client through the treatment that they've had you know that you can uh, just pull up these bookmarks over here and as long as you don't have anyone object to leading or a judge that actually sustains it you can have your stuff highlighted that you want to talk about you know and i always i mean objection you know that's the it's, it's highlights i mean we can do this the, the long way i can take another like hour and a half to th sort through it all um but i'll know because I've worked with my exhibits, what I want to show. I also like um, practice, super practice tip is instead of when it comes to trial, I'm, I'm not going to have a 444 page chronology uh, or uh, records, nor am I even going to use this chronology that the company gave me, which is super in depth. I'm going to have like uh, I'm going to have this. Just what I like to call my simple demand timeline. That basically, I put the dates of the visits, and each provider gets their own color. And that usually, I can get that down on one paper. And so that's just sitting there in front of my desk. So I, I know where to, which visit or which exhibit to go to, and I can follow that. Um, what else on exhibits, Rachel? I think so. Where you've taken us up to now is how you prepare uh, this stuff in trial pad to present it in trial or to present it in a deposition. Yeah. And so as far as using it in a deposition or in trial, show us some of the things that this thing is capable of and how you use it. All right. That's a good thing. So before, um, by the way, before we do that, I did want to show for example, um, I'm going to number these exhibits, right? And, but these are from, just so you know, they're from the intersection folder. So it includes this photo that I love so much. And it also includes this PDF because the, the multimedia doesn't uh, end up in these, in the filing cabinet of documents or key docs it ends up in this filing cabinet called multimedia. And when we go to add an exhibit, it just doesn't work. And maybe you can add it when it's in multimedia, but I go so like, um, So the pictures end up in the multimedia folder because they're live pictures, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. And or meaning, if, meaning they have movement to them. Yeah, so if, or if you had a video that you wanted to play, you know, that it ended up in the multimedia filing cabinet instead of the, you saw that it was in the um, folder for intersection when it was on my computer. And when I moved it over, it doesn't stay with all these other intersection exhibits that I have. So. Now, do you use trial pad to show deposition videos or not? Uh, I don't use trial pad itself, no. Okay. I use um, a different app, if you'll remind me, I'll show you later, but if I get out of this, it'll, you know how it is, I'll have to like, click five different buttons. Yeah. So now uh, it's like we've got all our stuff marked. Before I go to show them what you can do, what I, you need to see is you can do it with any filing cabinet, whether it be documents or key docs. You can select, select all, edit, and then export to iTunes. And so we've exported these. And this now has all the exhibits marked because it's exported with the exhibit sticker and your, my paralegal is able to uh, print off the exhibits. I mean, it creates separate PDFs for each exhibit and they've got the number. She prints the first page in color just so it has the colored exhibit sticker and <clears throat> it quickly makes her, uh, her uh, exhibit. That's, that's how she's doing the exhibit folders for the defense counsel and for the, and for the court. Yes. Okay. If you do it from your key docs file, so, or your, yeah, key docs filing cabinet, you can quickly do your redactions and then export that out to iTunes. And now it's so, I mean, it's just so much quicker. And then it's, you're doing it by just you sitting at home, you know, marking your little redactions. And to me, that's so much easier than um, PDF, plus you can take it on the go. Boy, we really stalled something here, didn't we? 
Um, <clears throat> but that's the, for me, that's the quickest way of doing my redactions. And then I've still got the uh, other files in the filing cabinet. So you're doing your redactions on trial pad. So if the judge makes some kind of ruling in the middle of the trial, that's not coming in. You can go to trial pad and go to it's redacted. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> okay. And then, you know, and I usually take a printer with me if I think it's going to be one of those type, keep it in the other room. And then it, we're talking probably one page, right? And you can just do your redactions real quick, batch it out to your iTunes on uh, your computer. You know, if you've got it, you can airplay your, or you can actually print from trial pad if you've got all that set up. And so you just printed it, now you're good to go. And we were talking about, just related to this issue, we were talking about this yesterday in our run through. Um, talk about if what you did in your one, in that one trial you were telling us about where you, you snapped a picture of that, that document that Fence thought was a hot document. Okay, yeah. Um, and by the way, the, uh, the uh, exhibit, the, the files end up being on your iTunes in that same place where I loaded the files on my trial pad. What I just batched out goes to that same thing and you just click and drag it over onto your desktop and there you're good to go. So, <clears throat> all right. I was at this trial like last October, October 2019, I can't remember. And um, this, the defense thought that they had this just wonderful document. It was like a, a, a marketing letter that one of my treating providers had sent to like every doctor. And they did, the only way they had to publish it because the Elmo wasn't working was to read it. And it, that just was horrible. And so I just quickly, um, I wanted to take a picture of it and I wanted to use it because there was stuff on there talking about insurance companies, um, screwing people and this, that, and the other. And so I just went to my photo Right, and pretend that this is like what I was going to take a picture of. All right, so we've got. So you're snapping a picture with your iPad. Yeah, with the iPad. In the court, in the courtroom of the defense exhibit. Yes, and it was like two pages, so it ended up being you know, two pages of stuff. And then I go to my photos, and I click that photo that I want. I add it to the file and select the case, write new rainy. Now I go into write new rainy, and there's the photo. And you can add it to you know, one of your folders for exhibits. You can, um, you can assign an exhibit sticker to it. So we'll just call it investigation. And now we've got an exhibit sticker. And we've got the exhibit. You can batch it out just like any of them, and you can Show it to the jury, do everything that you want to do. Okay. Well, so now you want to get into like what you can show with trial pad. Right. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's got its cool functions like highlighting stuff and calling out certain things that you want to bring to the jury's attention. Now, let me. Let me say something. You're seeing what I would see on my iPad when we're at the, so now I'm going to switch to, uh, I'm going to go off war room mode so that you would see what the jury sees and then I'll come back. So this is all that the jury would see. So this is being broadcast on the big screen that are is in the courtroom, the jury to look at exhibits on. Okay. And as I switch, it switches with me. And but they're not seeing all my little things on the left or all my buttons and stuff. And if I've got multimedia, that's what they're seeing. That's what they're seeing. Okay. I can't you can't zoom in here, which I wish you could. Um So, 
that you've got your um, highlights, everything. It's got a dual document. So if I wanted to compare stuff, I could have one document over here and then I click over here and now I've got another document. That way they're seeing two different documents. If you wanted to compare um, expert reports, photographs of the damage, I've done that to show that it matches up contrary to what the defense says about how the wreck happened. Now, when you do it this way, can you call out and highlight on each on each one that you're comparing? Uh, you can't have two call outs. At okay. The same time. So, yeah, if I if I called out on this, it would cover both of them. So gotcha. You, you can though zoom here and click over here and zoom here. So it's the same effect. You just got to remember to. Those are just me pinching it in. You just got to remember to go back. Okay. Um, I think that's kind of it with, oh, you can use a pin. And when you hold down on it, you can change the thickness of it. You can change, uh, you can make it a straight line there or change the color. I don't. So this, this is what you're using, Chris, when you mark up photographs the pen yeah. the pen okay yeah it's not the great you, if you double tap it it stays working it's not the i don't know sometimes I, I i'm not extremely happy with the accuracy it makes me look like a third grade handwriting but <laughs> you've got you can use a laser we all love lasers, right? So the jury's seeing just the red laser, not that purple fingerprint that you that you see. Correct. Yeah, correct. Okay. Yes. okay. They wouldn't see the purple finger, fingerprint. They just see a red dot. You can rotate the exhibits. All that, all that you need to. Um, I'm not sure why these are appearing in a stretched out version, maybe because it, oh, it's because it's in this war room mode. On your key docs, if you ever do add some stuff, if you don't like it, you can hit down here and it just clears that page. So it's not stuck there forever. You can clear it. Shelly Greco brings up a good point. I, you could use a Apple pencil to write as well, right? Oh well, yeah, I use yeah. the Apple as even okay. that, though, it doesn't, um, it's, well, maybe it's when it's thicker, it works. I don't know. But yeah, it's it, some of the, with the way the Apple Pencil works on some applications, it sure is a lot better than, than uh, this. Who's marking on the uh, screen? Okay. So do you think uh, at this point you might be ready to show us how this is all put together in a final product? Yes, I can do that. So at this point, you've loaded all your exhibits. Mm -hmm. You've marked them as exhibits. You've highlighted the ones you want to highlight. You've marked those as key docs. Yeah. You've bookmarked things that you want to save. And now you're ready to take a deposition. Yeah. How did we get these this writing on here? Someone I must have not turned on that off. Well, maybe you can clear it, maybe you can't. Um, so yeah, I can do a video. So this is a video I put together just kind of of this, um, of this deposition. Let's um, move it over to a different desktop. So I wanted to put together a video. You got it, Rachel? Yep, got it. 
that showed all the capabilities that Zoom and trial had offered. I wanted to make sure that trial lawyers knew that they could do the same thing in a Zoom deposition that they can do in person. In order to do that, I figured what better way than to just conduct a deposition. Thanks to the help of my wonderful paralegal, Tracy, and my ambassador of technology, Quan Brad, I put together this short video. It's a car wreck defendant, and it goes through and utilizes almost every uh, possible tool that TrialPad has to offer. In certain portions of the video, I have flipped over to the defense lawyer view. Uh, that's my friend Brad was playing that. And that way you can see what the other side is seeing in a Zoom deposition. Hope you enjoy and I hope you learn. Thanks. Ma'am, would you please state your name for the record? Diana Flash Prince. And this is Flash Prince. What's your understanding of why we're here today? Deposition. What? an auto accident that I was involved in. You believe that you caused that accident? No, I do not. All right. Well, that accident, it happened where? In Fort Worth. Well, the streets, please. On Bacone Street and 10th Street. Mrs. Prince, I'm putting up for the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what's marked as Exhibit 3. Do you see Exhibit 3? Yes, I do. You've seen this before, correct? Yes. And it is, in fact, <clears throat> the police report for the wreck that you were involved in on November 29, 2017? Yes. And it involved you? And my client, Mr. John Wayne Parker, correct? Correct. And as you stated, mm -hmm. it was on the corner of 10th and Make, correct? Yes. And it's my understanding that uh, you believe that you had a no light or that there was a signal light there, but it wasn't working, correct? That is correct. I'm going to show you what I've marked as Exhibit 4. <clears throat> exhibit 4, that's a fair and accurate representation of the location where the wreck occurred, correct? Yes, it is. You were traveling on 10th Street? Correct. You were traveling westbound, correct? Correct. Where I've drawn this red arrow, that's your direction. Yes, it is. This green arrow that I'm drawing right here, that is uh, Mr. Wayne's direction, correct? Yes. Now, exhibit number one, ma'am, this is the light that you said was not functioning, correct? Yes, it is. And we see here that it appears as though the signal light isn't working. Correct? Correct. It's your position that it was like that the entire time that you were approaching it and as you drove through it, correct? Yes. I'm going to show you something else. Have you seen this before? <laughs> Yes, I have. And it's from the same location and basically the uh, same light, same picture that we saw over here. And this is at number one, correct? Yes. But here, we've made the photo active and we can see that you did have a red light, correct? Yes. you would agree with me that you should have stopped at that flashing red light on the day of the wreck, right? Correct. Thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No. All right, so that's um, what you can do. And all that was done via Zoom. So 
<clears throat> I mean, that, that entire deposition, Tracy was at her house, I was at my house, and it was all done via Zoom, and then created later. I'll walk through how all that's done. By the way, right here, this export, that's the documents that, or the exhibits that we created, that you then bring to your desktop, And uh, it's got the numbers and everything. So now we're going to look at Zoom, I guess. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> so basically, what we just what you just went through is an explanation of the whole process, and then you put it into action so we could see how it looks in real time. Absolutely, yeah. I mean when you get in there and you're showing all the exhibits and, and cross-examining, but to me, it's all comes down to having all your documents ready and organized, um, especially like if you're cross-examining a defense expert, having all of your key docs done correctly and having the right bookmarks and the highlights in your trial pad software so that you can quickly reference them and show them to the uh, expert. So now, um, now we'll look at Zoom itself. Oop, not, not that. <clears throat> so you can access it, you know, the normal thing where you log on to the app. But when you go to Zoom itself, first thing you're going to look at is your profile. And then I wanted to talk briefly about the plans and pricing. Um, I, don't, I don't know how many people are using the basic or the free version, but um, if you're hosting a Zoom deposition, you'd be limited to a 40-minute one-on-one depo. So that's not going to work. I mean, a lot of people are using Pro. It's got it does pretty much everything you need it to. I switched to business. This $19.99 is so misleading because it's $200 a month because you have to have a minimum of 10 hosts. Um, but to me, it's worth it because of this cloud recording transcript and the amount of cloud storage that you have. So let's go to our recordings. This is this file right here that I'm about to click on is the one that I made for the deposition that I just played. And it is showing the six, like, yeah, six different things that were produced from that recording, including shared screen with gallery view. And shared screen is what I showed with my iPad, right? It's everything that was on the, in, in the iPad. Um, speaker view, gallery view, shared screen, audio only, which is like an iTunes recording, and then the audio transcript. So if we go to shared screen with gallery view. All right, the you can see that it's playing the video, the entire video, and would, when, just like y'all saw, it plays the shared screen in a much larger view. But what's super cool about this is you can search for any term that you use. So I know I said rec in there at some point. So if I search rec, it takes us to where it said rec um, in the transcript. And it actually takes us there in the deposit in the video. So yes. Now, are you using that to do things like edit the video, stuff like that? Yeah. If you want to use it, I'm trying to figure that out. So I don't know how much. To me, it's like I hadn't figured out how to use it exactly yet, because I've not figured out how to edit on Zoom, and uh, I do think that you could uh, use a software like. ScreenFlow or um, any other software that records your desktop, and you could just record this and then do the edits that way, but that doesn't answer your question. I don't think they've figured out how to do that. You can, though. Um, so we, we get this audio transcript, and it comes in a really weird format.
So this is what the audio transcript looks like. Um, On it's, Zoom. Yeah, it's when you download it. And it's the VTT version, which I've done some research on trying to convert it. And you can, but it, you have to like upload it somewhere and then they batch it back down. Uh, so I, I don't know how great that is. It's just more like here's the things that you can, they're going to make that, I'm sure they're going to make it to where you can um, do all your edits. You can though change these, if, if something's wrong, if someone says one word and you hear that and it's wrong here in the transcript, you can change it, all right? So we can change it to, I want to this day. And it would, I'm not gonna save it, but it would, um, it would change it in that transcript that I just showed you I downloaded. Also, we can click this button here, show subtitle, and it will play what's on the screen. What I can't figure out how to do yet, maybe some, someone on this uh, conference can tell me because I think it'd be super cool, is to uh, do this once you download the video. Because once I download the video, the subtitles don't show up. And I've, I've done some research. There is a way to get it done. Actually, there's some pretty cheap cloud conversion software out there. Or, or some, anyway, stuff that you load it up to. But the police report for the wreck that you were If you wanted to, I know you could uh, screen flow capture that, right? We could make it full screen. That you were in on. A, and just record our screen. And you would have the uh, same, you'd have the video that you wanted with the subtitles. So us, you could, if, you had you could pull out some video excerpts like if an expert said some something that was just a smoking gun and you had five you know five or ten seconds of video uh, you could you could pull that out stick it in ipad and use it in cross that five seconds in yeah. your multimedia file folder right oh yeah i mean so if, if the expert said something now but we're talking about you'd have to have a break but you could also why couldn't you um you can display what's on your computer to the jury. So if the expert said something, and let's just assume that we're going to, I need to find the word wreck because that's what I'm going to talk to him about. Why couldn't I just search for that and then um, make it full screen and be like, is that what you said? And then I play it. That's the police report for the wreck that you were in on November. And the jury sees exactly what I want. And I just stop him or I just stop at that point or, you know, when it goes too far and you've impeached them with the video and it, it shows the subtitles and everything. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And, All right. and for me, I love, I'd much rather impeach with a, a, de a defendant with their video as opposed to me reading the deposition with as, as much drama as I can. Right. Well, that, that's, a, that's a good segue, Chris, into um, a sister a sister app to this trial pad, which is transcript pad. Yeah. And you use that uh, pretty seamlessly, as I understand it. We went over this yesterday on, in your trials. Yeah, I should have uploaded some um, cleaner transcripts, but we'll go to transcript pad and we'll go to the case that we want to work on. Now, just just for the folks listening that don't know about this, these are these are two separate apps, but you can buy them in a bundle. Yeah, along with something called Doc Review Pad. Okay. From Lit Software is what it's called. So, for Transcript Pad, one thing that I can do is, yeah, I wish I, it didn't allow me to show the uh, my fingers going through it. So bear with me, but you could. Things that you want to highlight, you can assign these codes. Let's see if I can find one. Yeah. We'll just stick with the left hand. Um, you can assign codes that you want to um, remember, like maybe talking about pre existing conditions or talking about um, pain and suffering. I would just click the number where I want it to start. And then I click where I want it to end and I can create a new issue code. And so if I want to pre-existing and I've got that, I can highlight, you can add these notes. This so what you're doing is anytime they, the witness talked about pre-existing, you're assigning it a color. So it's easy to find. Yes. And, okay. and um, 
if I'm up, if I'm somewhere and I want to talk to the judge about or whoever about a certain thing in that, in this case, I can expand this and I can click there and it takes me directly to where all the portions in here where I've talked about pre-existing or where I talked about exhibits. But what's, what I like to use it for as well is for my deposition designations. So I will add in, I will create my designations by just assigning the code plaintiff designation, right? And I've got them all in here. And <clears throat> then I'll add the, okay, so I'll, I'll have that. And then I'll create a report and I'll deselect everything that I don't want to create in this report. I'll make it a detailed report and I will create the report. Now we've got plaintiff's designations. They're done. Now, if you ended a certain word, of course, you're going to need to um, make note of that. Sometimes you can use flags, but I'm, I'm not going to get into that. That gets very intricate in detail, but you've got your designations and you can easily convert this PDF into a Word document. And then you or your paralegal is just copying these numbers here and putting them in the depo designation. And plus, I just attach this to the designation that I file. Some judges don't like it. Others think it's great. And then if you are lucky enough to get a hearing with the judge about your deposition designations, you can um, quickly, you know, if you wanted to, you wanted to reference something specific, like, no, no, judge, they're saying blah, 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 or whatever. Plus, you can... Uh, you can search things up here in the top. So I don't, I don't know if this is a term. So every time that it said bulge, I can now go find that in the deposition. Do these depositions have to be in any specific format in order to upload them to trial? Uh, yeah, TXT formats, what I get them in. I don't know if it takes any additional formats, but that's what I get. Okay. Uh, TXT. Um, then another cool thing that it does is the wonderful Dr. Roger Clifford. Is, I like We've got a comment, a comment here. You can use transcript pad to create cuts for trial director video cuts as well. And yeah. use ASCII. Yeah. Whoever uses trial director, email me about that. I because I've not done that yet. Now someone when I talked to trial pad the other day, they told me about that that you can use that, but I have never used trial director. Who did that? Um, yeah, because I want to figure that out. So <clears throat> you create these impe this impeachment portions, right? And maybe I. I keep seeing that hemorrhoids flash across the scene. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Roger. As a chiropractor, talk about hemorrhoids. Yeah. Yeah. He, I think he tried to make a joke, but it didn't. <laughs> now I've marked my all my impeachments, and I want to create a report. Instead of having a detailed report up here, I switch it to impeachment. And I deselect everything but impeachment. I create the report. And that's created one document that only has, you know, the portion that you want to specifically play as impeachment. Right? Because um, you can't show the whole depo. There's your hemorrhoids again. And then you can back this out to trial pad. It'll ask you to select a case. You can't see it because I'm now, um, but it adds it to the case. I have to make my uh, trial pad show. Again. We've got a quick question. That's did you, did you say PTX, PXT format? PXT, like Tom. TXT, TXT. Okay. Yeah. So Then I do the defendant's designations and my objections as well. That way it's super easy to uh, see what's been, you know, what I need to worry about. And uh, I, when I've done my deposition designations, I send them to the guy who does my video edits. And then I go to the hearing where I receive the judge's order and I've got my report that you saw me create. 
So I created that report in PDF. And then I just, if the judge doesn't allow something, I just mark out what the judge doesn't allow and send that to my uh, editor and then he can correct it. But that way he's made the initial cuts early on. So it's just, you don't have to worry about it. I sit, the minute I do my designations, I send off those to the uh, guy who does the edits, Anthony Marlar, so that he can get that created and then he can easily change it later if need be. There was some fun that I had with um, Cass Karamidis' office with this deposition and I, I can't remember what it was. Oh, it's so, this is where it was. So I, <clears throat> they went with that typical um, cross-examination of a treating chiropractor about, you didn't do residency or you didn't have an internship, um, as opposed to, well, you know, there was something else, even where he calls him chiropractor Lopez. And so I, uh, in closing arguments, I was like, you know, this is just them trying to send you subliminal messages and play to conservative bias. And here's examples of that. Why does he call him chiropractor uh, Lopez, but he calls his own doctor, Dr. Clifford. And then since these were deposition designations that were played at trial, like from a live video, you could actually play, you could actually show that to the jury in closing arguments and show them the exact words of that. Or, you know, so it's just an easy way if someone's been called via deposition, it's basically like having the dailies because you've got it in trial path and you can create that real quick. Um, I don't know, that's about, wow, that's right at an hour. I mean, there's tons of, tons of things, but anyone has got questions? Um, well, and you also do something where you integrate your impeachment that you've gone through and marked out in transcript pad, you integrate that into trial pad. Yeah. Where you, in, in where you transfer that impeachment yeah. stuff. So that just, and I transferred it earlier. It just, because I have to go through these. Oh, okay. The presentation. <clears throat> so I added it to write be rainy. So here it shows up for our case. So by just transferring it over to the case and trial pad, we've now got these and we can play them to the jury. <laughs> is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So we've got we've got a question from Shelly Greco. How do you how do you um, live put, make a picture become live or make uh, movement to that picture? I, I I'd have to Google it again. I just I knew that I could do it, and so I like Google. How do you make a photo live? And and it's just it was I forget what it was. I mean, I'll look it up and send it to you. But it was just a few clicks. It wasn't that much, wasn't that difficult. But you just never know what you're going to find. Like, I thought that, you know, I'd much rather show, do you want to see this photo or do you want to see him blinking? And just like, it just adds a little more vividness to the, uh, to the presentation. And so this had to have been taken on an iPhone with the live yeah. feature on yeah, I just got lucky that the witness who took the deposition of um, yeah, the witness who saw this wreck just happened to have an iPhone that had the live uh, options showing. Right. Yeah. What uh, other questions do we have? You want to take questions? You want to take some questions, Chris? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Since everybody, since this is a meeting format, at this at this stage, you can unmute yourselves if y'all have any questions, and we can just talk about it. By the way, this was the witness that for that case, and I just I love. Ah. I mean, he normally wouldn't be a guy that I'm like a fan of, but I, like the, the defense lawyer, he couldn't. Uh, the witness couldn't stand it. He's like, you know, just talking back to him, like, you want me to repeat myself? Seriously? And it's just, I think. It's <laughs> Bump, and then it said some kind of cuss word underneath that, but he'll play well. So yeah, what um anything? No doubt. That's if you guys go to gallery view, go to the the right hand upper right hand corner, go to gallery view, you can see everybody. And if you have any questions. 
now's the time. We got Chris hostage here. I'm trying to think of any more tips. I can, can everyone unmute? Unmute all. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or they can mute themselves again if they want. Anybody? Hey, Chris. Chris, I have a question. Yeah. I'm using the Reflector 3, and for some reason, I've got a brand new MacBook Pro and the same iPad that you had, the generation 3 one. When it goes to share the screen, it's not showing Reflector 3 on it, but if I do it on a Dell, it shows the Reflector 3. Are you doing it on a, on a, on a, on a, on a laptop or are you doing it on a desktop Mac? A MacBook Pro or a laptop. What are you doing it on? I, I, I mean, it's a brand new MacBook Pro. I bought two. Yeah. So it, you probably need to um, do your settings. Okay. It could be settings. It could be like a security issue. You, you said you downloaded Reflector. Three. I've got a video that I'll, I'll put up on the um, on my YouTube channel about how to connect Reflector Three or how to connect your iPad to um, your MacBook. Um, say that again. What? There's so I use PCs. There's two apps that you need. <laughs> Somebody wants to come in on the meeting. There's two apps that you need to run TrialPad on your PC. You need Reflector 3 and you need Air Parrot 2. <laughs> Yeah, um, I will. I will share that um, video that for connecting your laptop or your iPad to your uh, MacBook Pro. Uh, just I'll, look, I'll, I'll send it to Rachel and she can share that. Uh, what is the Air Parrot? Yeah, I don't know. Air Parrot Two is. Uh, a facilitator to mirror your iPad to your PC. So it's different than Reflector and you use them in combination? We, I've you, got use them in com three. you use them in, I use them in combination. AirParrot Air Parrot gives me a code. I put that into Reflector 3 and my iPad works on my PC. AirParrot Air Parrot will let you display your PC screen onto nearby Apple TVs as well. Um, so, was it Jay that was asking? Yeah. You go to, I mean, your reflector three is up here. It doesn't like open up uh, on your main screen. It's just up here, yeah. it's all up here. Um, it's this little thing. And it does that. That, you know, so are you can check your preferences. I mean, make sure that you've got your connections right. I don't have air set place security because that just slows everything down, creates a lot of issues. Make sure, by the way, I like having solid color. I think yep. that's black. Um, but make sure that your security, your connections are all correct. Um, and then beyond that, are you doing like, Look at my iPad here. Are you uh, swiping down from the top? You hit um, screen mirroring and then you uh, yep. the to mirroring to you, right? Yeah. Are you doing all that? Yep. Man, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Be happy to check it out and see what I can do. But check the security functions. Now, I bet there's something with the security functions on your MacBook Pro that are particular. Like, so you've, you've turned off your AirPlay security? The AirPlay security? Yeah. For that app, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're, if you're at home doing this stuff, I don't, I don't know anyone that's gonna. Yeah. Watch, I'll get, I'll get in trouble. I'll get that. Yeah, I've, I've just turned that off and I'll try it afterwards to see if that changes anything. But I've been putting in the code that pops up. 
It's like a four digit code. Yeah, turn that off if you want. Go try it. But I it's think, crit go ahead. Well, I think that there's a, um, I think that there's a security function we need to check on. I just don't know what it is. I'd have to click around and look for it. Is Craig Henderson on? Yes, I am. Hey, Craig, you have some really good uh, tips on the chat. Can everybody, yeah. else, can everybody else mute their laptop if they're not talking? That would be so helpful. I'm not, I'm not turning on my camera because I don't want to scare the group. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so on the, on trial director, if you look, if, if you want to use your trial pad to make cuts for trial director, you, you go in there and, and it just, just like we were talking about earlier, you, you go in there, you choose out, out of the depositions what you want your cuts to be. And I'll usually create a, just something that is called depot cuts, something that simple. Uh, and then I, then when you've done that, you click the reports button on the bottom uh, and that pulls up that, that page and where you have all of your issue codes, you unselect all those, you choose depot cuts, that's what I do. Yeah. And then you hit the trial director button. And what that does is it creates a file, a dot, I think it's dot CCS file. And that's that file, when you upload that into trial director, that's that trial director uses that file to sync it in with your video that would have already been uploaded into trial director. Uh, now, don't ask me how to upload the video. That gets a little bit beyond me. I just know how to get this to my trial director guy. <laughs> and it it is very simple. Once you load that CCS file into Trial Director, it does all the depot cuts. So do you and you, you still have to you, you still have to go in and, and make sure everything is synced correctly. But you have to do that anyway with Trial Director. Yeah. But it makes it super easy uh, to do your video cuts off of uh, Trial Director by using TrialPad. I mean that's the main reason I'll be honest with you. Why I first got Trial it's Transcript Pad, excuse me was so I could do the depot cuts for trial director. Although you, transcript pads great for a lot of other things. Do you own trial director like the program on your computer? Yeah. I, well, I don't. Uh, my The IT guy I use does. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know, I, I didn't know if it was, I never, I looked, I thought about getting it, but trend, but lit software, the people that make trial pad and transcript pad, all those are, supposed to i went up to the ada tech conference um 2016 2018 and they said that they were coming out with a uh, program to do video cuts but then uh apple redid its entire configuration for ipad and so that's been solved but, yeah so this is something soon which would be awesome well i'll tell you the trial pad was so great about trial pads that that people like me can use it whereas uh Actually, uh, but trial director, I find it be very complicated, and it's it's not something that I was able just to pick up and figure out. I have to use a third party to help me use that. So hopefully, you, uh, the trial pad guys will come out with something. Uh, yeah. Does everyone know the settings to use in Zoom to record the uh, to the videos that you want? Like. I get a lot of questions about um, why can't I not change my views? Like, so knowing the difference between speaker view, gallery view, shared view, all that. Uh, real quick, I'll just. When it comes to your recordings, you want to check your settings. And I just have all these selected. But active speaker is the one where it switches between who's talking and the deposition. Gallery view is in that short demo of the deposition that I played. Gallery view is where it shows those people at the top. And then um, all these other options are, I just select them all. But that's to make sure that you get every view that you want. I mean, you can go delete what you don't want later, but it, it gives you the, um, the things you need to, to get all those downloads that I have. 
that are on your cloud now. Awesome. Any other questions? Anything, anything anyone else wants to talk about, discuss? Any ideas, advice? Who's all using TrialPad right now? I use it on occasion. Any yeah. other ideas for those of you using TrialPad that we didn't go over here that you can enlighten us on? It's one of those things you gotta, I mean, I fell on my face a few times in trial. <laughs> just doing it though. Eventually you get so comfortable with it that you don't worry and you do fine with it. Now I, I don't, I don't worry what, whatsoever. If, any, if anything happens these days, it's usually from the court's technology not working. You know, Chrissy uh, put a, a, uh, a comment in here. All state attorney Samantha Gowan only uses iPad at trial, no paper. The jury loved it. I've got, I've had the same, I've had the same uh, effect. Jurors have come up to me and said, your presentation was so much better and it was all trial pad. It was all trial pad. Because this is how jurors are learning and assimilating information. They're, they're all scrolling on their devices. Oh yeah. When I was at um, the trial lawyers college, uh, Gary Spence was talking to us and I was like, um, Mr. Spencer, what do you think about using an iPad in uh, trial? And he's like, did Atticus Finch have an iPad? <laughs> no. I ended up making a, a photo of Atticus Finch with an iPad the other day to show him. They like it. I mean, they absolutely do. I, I'd have I'd have magicians smoke and appear all over the courtroom if, if I could get away with it. But I think for those of us older lawyers that don't like to carry around the whole boxes, I mean, it makes your whole trial paperless. I mean, you have to bring paper exhibits until they change that. But what's great is you can carry your iPad in and you can the equivalent of 20 boxes of documents. Yeah. And you can, um, our, you can take what's on your trial pad, archive it, and then transfer it over to another iPad and they've got the same case that you were working on. Now any additions or changes that they do on that case won't automatically sync to yours. You'd have to transfer it again, but that's super cool to do too. So in theory, you could give the judge the case and if he's, if he's he or she's good with working through trial pad, he can look, he can look at whatever you're showing. Nice. Well, thank you, Chris, for your time and your expertise here. Um, it was yeah. pretty great. Thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Absolutely. And uh, everyone else, thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Good to have you. Great job, Rachel. Great job, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. See you all. And un until next time. All right. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Chris.